American period is one of the turning points which made our Philippine literary tradition colorful and interesting. This period saw the addition of a colorful language, the English language, as an indispensable tool for literature and communication. The history of the Philippines from 1898 to 1946 covers the period of American rule in the Philippines and began with the outbreak of the Spanish-American War in April 1898. The Filipino revolutionaries won against the Spaniards and the Philippine independence was, pro was proclaimed on June 12, 1898. The flag was hoisted by General Emilio Aguinaldo and the Philippine Republic was inaugurated but was short-lived. The Philippines lost in the Philippine-American War with the surrender of General Miguel Mal Malvar of Batangas and General Simeon Ola of Bicol. Philippine literature during the American rule was influenced by two factors. One is the introduction of free public instruction for all children of school age, and two, the use of English as the medium of instruction in all levels of education in public schools. With the Americans providing free education, many were given the chance to study and English was used as a language of instruction. Unlike the Spanish, the foreigners were willing to teach their language to the Filipinos. Free education served as the stepping stone for others to improve their social status. Many Filipinos started writing again, and the nationalism of the Filipino remained undaunted. Filipino writers went into all forms of literature like news reporting, poetry, stories, plays, essays, and novels. Their writings clearly depicted their love of country and their longings for independence. Poetry was written in three languages, Filipino, Spanish, English, and in a different dialects. Some of the known poets during the American period were Maximo Calau, Carlos P. Romulo, Maria Agoncillo, Paz Marquez Benitez, Salvador P. Lopez, Jose Garcia Villa, Carlos Bulusan, and many others. Short stories in English of early Filipino functionists are marked with American style. With the publication of Paz Marquez Benitez, Dead Stars, it was made the landmark of the maturity of the Filipino writer in English. Many writers followed Benitez and started publishing stories manifesting skills in the use of the foreign language and a keen Filipino sensibility. The latter stages of the American period continued to produce great poets and writers like Julian Cruz, Balmaceda, Florentino Colantes, Pedro Gatmaitan, Jose Corazon de Jesus, Lope Key Santos, Alejandro Abadilla, Teodoro Agoncillo, and Inigo Ed Regalado. They use a modern style of poetry that is made up of free verse. Indeed, this period witnessed a dramatic flowering of the Philippine literature considering the sheer volume of works produced, the ringing of names etched in the Philippine literary pantheon, as well as the introduction and development of new literary genres as genuine additions to the already rich Philippine literary tradition. Let's discuss on the period of reorientation. This period covered the early years of the American period. Sometime around early 1898, a group of young Filipinos called the Illustratus appeared and they were products of universities and wealthy families, but most of them were put to exile. Before the Spaniards arrived, the Philippines already had their own literature, written in Baybayin. But eventually, 
the ancient writing system was banned and burned by the hands of the Spaniards, and little to no records were found. It's a good thing that some of the literatures were passed down by mouth. On August 13th, 1898, the Americans liberated the Philippines from the Spanish invaders. This was also known as the Battle of Manila. Around the 1900s, the Americans established a public school system during the war, and the English language was used as a medium of instruction in public schools in the Corregidor Island. The first English teachers were the American soldiers themselves. Later on, the professional teachers arrived via USS Thomas. They established public elementary, secondary, and tertiary schools. They also established the University of the Philippines, Philippine School of Arts and Trades, which eventually became the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, the Philippine Normal School, which became Philippine Normal University, Siliman University, and Xavier University in the Visayas and Mindanao. Lastly, the first attempts in English were written in two periodicals, El Renacimiento, which was the pioneering newspaper to publish works written in the English language, and the Philippines Free Press, the first privately owned publication to publish English works of the Filipino writers. Now, what are some works of literature in this period? Let's move on to find out. I know that we are all aware of the novel No Limit Tangheria and Alfo Dos Turismo by Jose Rizal, the bittersweet love story of Maria Clara and Ibarra and Filipinos fighting for their freedom. Now, this story, Bulang Sugat, is similar with the two novels that I have mentioned. Now, join me as I discuss the story Walang Sugat by Severino Reyes. So who is Severino Reyes? Well, he is the author of the play Walang Sugat. He was born in February 11, 1861 at Santa Cruz, Manila. And he acquired his early schooling in an institution owned by Catalino Sanchez and studies at the Escuela de Segunda Enseñanza Colegio de San Juan de Letran, and where he obtained his Bachelor of Arts. In 1902, he founded and directed the Grand Compañía de Sarsuela Tagala, which became famous during its time. It presented its first one-act piece, Ang Kalupi, in April 1902 in Teatro Zerilia. Also, Severino Reyes became recognized in other countries for his mastery in drama. Governor Taft, the first civilian governor of the Philippines, is exhibited was exhibited the programs of his plays in the St. Louis Word Exposition and the Panama Pacific International Exposition. And also, the best thing is that, do you know that Severino Reyes is the real Lola Bashan? Yes, you heard it right. Lola Bashan is not a girl, but a man, and that is Severino Reyes. We already know who is the author of the Walang Sugat. Now let's proceed to the setting and the atmosphere of the story. Walang Sugat takes place in the Gento Bulacan, Philippines during the Spanish Revolution, and the atmosphere of the story is love, patriotic, and revenge. And now, let's meet the characters of the story Walang Sugat. Let's start off with Tanyong. Tanyong is the main character of the story and a man who dearly loves his family, country, and woman, Julia. Julia is the woman where Tanyang loves. Kapitan Ingo is the father of Tanyang. Lucas. Lucas is the right hand of Tanyang and also his best friend. Juana. Juana is Julia's mother who is very controlling. Miguel. Miguel is the man whom Juana wanted to marry off with her daughter. Priests and friars are the greedy people in the story. The Walang Sugat is in the third person point of view or the omniscient point of view. The, this is a, a story in Tagalog context and it depicts the life of Filipinos during the Spanish era in 1896 to 1898. I know you're all excited to know the story of Walang Sugat. Now, let us proceed to the plot of the story. So the story started with Julia embroidered the initials of Tanyong in a handkerchief. Tanyong sees it and asks if it was for him. But Julia denied and said that it was for the friars or the priest. Julia was being pabebe at that time. Shortly, Lucas arrived and reported that several men, including the father of Tanyong, got arrested by the civil guards because on suspicion of being rebels. And the families and friends of the detained men visited them and bring foods to the provincial jail. 
the Spanish friars instruct Marcelo, the town mayor, to continue the torture of the prisoners, showing no mercy at all. Despite the death of seven of them and the near death of Capitan Ingo, then Young's father. The head friar tells Ingo's wife that he has ordered the, ordered the punishment of her husband stopped or cancelled and that he would recommend to the governor the release of all prisoners too. However, he, he tells the other friars that they will go to Manila and advise the governor general to have the rich and educated Filipinos executed. This shows how the friars in the Spanish time are very hypocrite and very greedy. And after that, Captain Engo met his wife and friends just before he expires or just before his death. Over his dead body, the heartbroken Tenyong promise and swears vengeance while his mother faints in shock. Tenyong then decides to join the rebel and also to recruit men. Julia tries to dissuade him, claiming that his widowed mother needed him and despite her pleas, he is determined to, to heed the call of duty of his motherland and ask Julia to look for his mother. In resignation, Julia prays for his success and safety and gives him her religious medal and they vow to love each other forever. Miguel tried to win the heart of Julia, but Julia still thinks of his true and great love, Daniel. And after that, while the rebels are in the midst of preparations for an assault on the enemy, Lucas shows up to deliver Julia's message to Tenyon. Tenyon saying that she would marry Miguel. And Captain Tenyon learns that learns of his mother's death and of Julia's impending marriage to Miguel. Depressed by the sad news and feeling helpless to heed her plea to save her, he turned for help with General, who promised to effect their marriage at all costs. While Julia, in desperation to avoid marrying Miguel, urges Lucas to take her to the camp of Tenyo, but he fears that they would not see him because the rebels are always on the way and on the move and Lucas advises her to spurn or reject Miguel during the wedding ceremony. But Julia would not think of disobeying her mother, so she just leaves everything to God. Day of the wedding, the town turns into a festive mood to witness the wedding rites that will unite the, the unions of two prominent families. prepares to enter the church, the rebels, led by their general, arrive, and there was Tanyong, who was heavily, but heavily bandaged, lying on the carabao sled. Upon seeing him, Julia became hysterical and refuses to enter the church. And her mother, who was also worried, asked the general to get a doctor to examine Tanya. And after examining, the doctor said that he was on the verge of death. So, a priest was summoned for his final rites. And after that, the priest then announces the last request of the dying man, which is to marry his childhood lover, Julia. Juana is shocked to know and to learn of her daughter's secret and scolds her for the deception. And Miguel and his father give their consent to this strange request for they know that Tenyong will re expire very soon or will die very soon and the original wedding can take place. Juana is also prevailed upon to give his blessings so the new bridegroom still suited in the bandages is brought to the side of Julia for the start of the wedding rites. As the priest is about to begin the nuptials, Tenyong rises unexpectedly, removing his bandages, and the crowd shouts in disbelief, Walang Sugat. The Walang Sugat is in the third person point of view or the onsen point of view. The, this is a, a story in Tagalog context and it depicts the life of Filipinos during the Spanish era in 1896 to 1898. Walang Sugat made me realize a lot of things. First is that if we truly love someone, we will find ways and do our best to pursue and be with them at all costs. Second is that we must protect and save our motherland. Just like in the Spanish times, we are being colonized for 333 years and we are slaves in our own country, which is very wrong. Us Filipinos, we must speak out, we must protect our country, we must do our best to protect our rights and our freedom. Third is that I have observed Filipino women back in the Spanish era are very scared to speak out their opinions, just like Julia, who resisted or who declined to voice out her opinions because she was afraid to disobey her mother. Um, we women must look after it or take it as a lesson. We must not be afraid of speaking 
out what we really think and we must not let other people dictate who we marry and what we do in our life. So before we proceed further into our lesson, first let's have a flash trivia. Did you know that during the American period is when the first Balagtasan took place? On March 1924, five days before the birthday of Francisco Balagtas, some writers created the concept of Balagtasan, and on April 6, 1924, it was then held in celebration to Balagtas' birth anniversary. Due to the successful public reception, they held more Balagtasan. After the performances of Jesus and Colantes in 1925 until the end of the World War II, the verbal joust became popular among the masses. So that is it for our Flash Trivia for today. We are now in the period of imitation. It was started in the year 1910 up to 1925. And by its name, imitation, Filipino artists in this period heavily imitated the American and British artists. With that, short stories, novels, and essays in English as well as newspapers and periodicals saw an opportunity during this period, like the Philippine Herald, which is founded by the first president of the Commonwealth of the Philippines, Manuel L. Quizon together with the Rising Philippines and Citizens and the Philippine Education Magazine. The UP College Folio, now known as the Philippine Collegian, was the first school paper in the Philippines to be published. It also published the literary compositions of the first Filipino writers in English language and pioneered in short story writing and poetry. The writers of this folio includes Fernando Maramag, who was the best editor-writer of this period. Together with Juan Salazar, Jose Hernandez, Vicente Del Fierro, Francisco Africa, and Victoriano Yamzon. Unfortunately, their works resulted in unnatural style and lacks vitality. The notable essayists in this period includes Carlos P. Romulo, George C. Bocobo, Mauro Mendez, and Vicente Hilario. They were formal essay writers that excelled in the serious essays, especially in memoirs and editorial type. Their works were characterized with sobriety, substance, and structure. In informal essay writers includes Ignacio Manlapaz, Gurifedro Rivera, Federico Mangahas, Francisco Icasiano, Salvador Lopez, Jose Lansang, and Amando Dairit. They introduced the informal essay, criticism, and the journalistic column. They spiced their work with humor, wit, and satire, which made their works very fun to read and write. The notable literary fiction in this period. In novel, there is Zoilo Galang, author of A Child of Sorrow, the very first Philippine novel written in English language, which is published in 1921. In short story, there is Paz Marquez Benitez. She was the author of Dead Stars, and this 1925 short story gave birth to modern Philippine writing in English language. It stood out as a model of perfection in character depiction, plot and message because like aforementioned, other written literature published during this time were just poor imitations of their foreign models. And to tackle more about this pedestaled work of Paz Marquez Benitez, here is Miss Nator for the Dead Stars. Paz Marquez Benitez was a Filipino short story writer, educator, and editor. Her career as a woman educator as well as her contributions as a writer are seen as an important step within the advancement of women in the professional careers as well as in the development of Filipino literature. During her career as a writer, Marquez Benetas wrote short stories critical of American imperialism. She is most known by her short story Dead Stars published in 1925 in which the two main characters are displayed as allegories to American imperialism in order to portray the slow decay of the Philippine heritage. Her only other known published work is A Night in the Hills that is also published in the year 1925. Even though she had only two published works, her writings would be regarded as the first steps of the Philippine literature moving in the mainstream. Marquez Benetez remains as a prominent influence on the Philippine literature through not only her writing but her impact as an educator and editor. Her and her husband's establishment of educational magazines, schools, and her contribution to the development of creative short story writing courses within the Philippines is believed to have inspired generations of Filipino writers. The setting of the story Don Julian's house 
It is where Carmen asks her father about Alfredo and Esperanza. Judge Del Valle's house, it is where Alfredo saw Julia. Calia Real, where the possession of the Lady of Sorrows was held, and Santa Cruz is where the hometown of Julia. The time of the story is Lenten season because they are celebrating the Holy Week proven by the procession they made with Our Lady of Sorrows. Atmosphere The story has sad tone. It deals with human weakness when one is in love. Characters Alfredo Salazar Alfredo is the son of Dun Huyan, who is over 30 years old bachelor. Alfredo Salazar believes in a true love and optimism to discover access in its tear. Esperanza is the first woman he falls in love with. After their engagement, he falls in love with Julia Salas. Esperanza She is the wife of Alfredo Salazar. Esperanza is an impassionate woman having strong will and principles. A homely woman, she is also among the lucky women who have aptitude of consistent beauty. Julia Salas She is the sister-in-law of Judge Del Valle, a friend of Alfredo's father. She is the second woman with whom Alfredo falls in love with. She remains single for her entire life. Don Julian He is the father of Alfredo. Carmen She is the only sister of Alfredo Salazar. Judge Del Valle He is Julia's brother-in-law. Donna Adela She is Julia's sister. A pretty, small, plump woman with baby complexion. Calixta. He is a old carrier of Esperanza and Alfredo Salazar. Junicio. Donna's husband. Vicente. Carmen's husband. Brigida Samoy. The elusive woman whom Alfredo is searching for, who is important to his case that he is in. Now, let's move forward and talk about the plot of the story. Exposition At Don Julian's house, Carmen was asking Don Julian about Alfredo and Esperanza. They talk about when will the lovers tie the knot. Rising action Alfredo had gone neighboring with Don Julian to judge Del Valle's house. He met Julia Salas there and mistakenly addressed her as the sister of Judge Del Valle, which led him to embarrassment. Alfredo apologized to Julia, and the woman told her it was okay, and she remembered a similar incident. That moment, Alfredo is amazed and appreciates the woman's beauty. Climax After the procession of the Lady of Sorrows, Alfredo caught up with Julia. Julia congratulated Alfredo for his upcoming wedding. He asks the woman if she is interested with weddings. The woman answered him yes, especially if it is the wedding of her friend. He then invited Julia to his wedding. Alfredo is in a difficult situation, confused, whether if he has to choose between something he wanted to do or something he had to do. Following action, Julia chooses not to understand Alfredo and wave goodbye and quickly turn away. That moment in time, Alfredo had said what he had to say to Julia. After that, Alfredo had this fable flutter of hope in his mind bugged by his conscience and thought about his three years of engagement with Speranza, who is patiently waiting for him to have their wedding be celebrated. Dinoma Alfredo and Esperanza finally tied a knot. After eight years, he was searching for a lady named Rikida Samwe, a lady that is important for his defense in the court in Santa Cruz, Julia's hometown. He went to Julia's house and found out that she is still unmarried. He then realized that his love for the woman is like a dead star. It was non-existent. The theme of the story is love and infatuation. Love is the dominant theme of the story. Alfredo loved Esperanza and believed in his love to marry him. Alfredo thought he and Julia loved each other but had to sacrifice their taboo affair. Also, it is forbidden love since his love for Julia is wrong and is engaged and about to be married with Esperanza. POV and style of the story The story is in a third-person, omniscient point of view. We can only see or feel the thoughts and feelings of the characters if the author allows to reveal on the reader. We only know what the character knows and what the author allows us to see. 
realizations and moral lesson of the story. We should focus on what is real and possible and not be distracted with fantasies. We are often confused with things and is easily driven by our own emotions. When in love, we should be contented with our significant other and will not look for another one. We should be contented with the diamond that we have and not be busy collecting stones. To be loyal with the love of your life is just the bare minimum and simplest act you should do. And when you fall out of love with your partner and you want it to be with someone else, just tell your partner. There's nothing wrong with admiring someone else's beauty. The bad thing about it is when you think and imagine yourself to be with them, to choose them over the love of your life. And that is emotionally cheating. Also, we should be aware of the difference between love and infatuation. Assess your feelings carefully. During the period of self-discovery that runs over two decades, from 1925 to 1941, American influence was deeply entrenched with the firm establishment of English as the medium of instruction in all schools and with literary modernism that highlighted the writer's individuality and cultivated consciousness of craft, sometimes at the expense of social consciousness. In this period, Filipino writers acquired mastery of the English language. Evidently, they began to write confidently and competently. Poetry produced during this time was original, spontaneous, competently written, and even socially conscious. Poetry in this period has been evolving and forming new form, which was free verse or an open form that does not have consistent meter and rhyming patterns. On the contrary, Filipino poets also wrote a sonnet, a 14-line poem that is written in iambic pentameter. They had also written odes that is formal and ceremonious lyrical poem that usually addresses and often celebrates a person, place, a thing, or idea. Lastly is the elegy, also known as the Song of Mourning, that is also a lyrical poem lamenting about death. Here are some of the notable poets in this period and one of their works. Marcelo de Garcia Concepcion and his Silent Trails. Jose Garcia Villanas the Big Lion, which is actually his pen name that stands for Dog, Eagle, and Lion, representing his true persona. And it is actually a book consisting of a collection of his poems. We also have Angela Manalang Gloria and her Revolt from Hymen. Next, we have Abelardo Subido and his soft night. Of course, his loving wife, Trinidad de Rosa Subido and her To My Native Land. Lastly is Rafael Zulueta da Costa and his Like the Mulave. Aside from poetry, short story has likewise flourished during this time. Numerous short story writers were motivated due to incentives given by these following publications. Philippine Free Press, The Graphic, the Philippine Magazine, and UB Literary Apprentice. Short story characteristics has the touch or the remnants of Spanish influence in terms of being florid, sentimental, exaggerated, and bombastic. And it also adapted the Western culture. Some of the noteworthy authors of short stories, we have Paz La Torena and her short story entitled Sunset. There is also the Filipino Love Stories by Paz Marquez Benetes, Nalanata's Wife by Sinai si Hamada and the famous Mer Inisa by Jose Garcia Villa. In continuation, essays during this period improved with the years in quality and quantity, in content, subject, and style. There are three categories in this period. First one is political, social, and reflective essays. These essays were opinions and viewpoints by the essayists using their newspaper columns which appeared regularly. Hence, they were very popular during this time. Some political, social, and reflective essayists include Federico Mangajas, Salvador P. Lopez, and Bura Santillan. Second is critical essays. These essays were serious treatment of various issues during this period. The critical essayists include Salvador P. Lopez, Ismael Maliare, Jose Garcia Villa and Maximo Sullivan, who wrote the prize-winning essay entitled, They Called It Brotherhood. Third and the last is personal or familiar essays. These essays were casual and light in terms of the mood they were written. They provided 
sort of entertainment and relaxation for the readers. Popular essayists of this kind include Francesco Icaciano, Alfredo Iglechaco, and Solomon V. Arnaldo. Notable essays are Literature and Society that was written by Salvador P. Lopez. This is a collection of critical reflections and serious essays. It actually won first place in the Commonwealth Literary Contest in Essay. The Filipino Way of Life was written by Camilo Osayas. This is a series of essays on the Filipino way of life, as drawn from history, folkways, philosophy, and psychology of the Philippines. We also have Mangkiko, which was written by Francisco Icaciano. It is an essay of the common tao and is written with humor and sympathy. And of course, I Am a Filipino was an editorial essay written by Carlos B. Romulo, printed in the Philippines Herald magazine. Writing biography and autobiography became fashionable during this period. Some notable biographies during this period include Quezon, that was published in 1935, written by Caballero and Marcelo de Garcia Concepcion, which was about the late President Manuel L. Quezon. The Great Malayan, which won the Commonwealth Literary Contest for Biography about Rizal. Quezon, Man of Destiny, is also all about Manuel L. Quezon that are both written by Carlos Quirino and both published in the year 1938, who is considered as the most famous biographer of the period. Next is The Birth of This Content was an autobiography written by Ismael Magliari that revealed the sensitive touch of a writer who, in simple language, was able to reveal his profound thoughts and feelings and was also published in the year 1940. Next to that is drama performances, which also played a major role in the history of arts in the Philippines. In fact, the University of the Philippines introduced playwriting as a course. UP established the UP Little Theater and provided incentives for playwrights who wrote plays. Wilfredo Maria Guerrero became director of UP Theater and he also popularized drama performances in the country. He founded the UP Mobile Theater, which performed in various plays throughout the country and performed in various universities worldwide. Some of the notable drama performances are as follows. The summer solstice, or also known as Tetarin or Tetarin, is a short story written by Filipino national artist for literature, Nick Joaquin. In addition to being regarded as one of his most acclaimed literary works, the tale is considered to be controversial because of the mix of pagan ritual and Christian rites of passage. Nicomedes Nick Marquez Joaquin, who was born on May 4, 1917 in Paco, Manila and died in April 29, 2004 in San Juan, was a Filipino writer and journalist best known for his short stories and novels in the English language. He also wrote using the pen name Quijano de Manila. Now, let us analyze the story using the elements of fiction. First, setting and atmosphere. The story was set in the 1850s in the Philippines. The atmosphere of the story appears to be as festive, ritualistic, and pro-women. Next, we have the characters. Doña Lupeng Moreta, long worried woman with three children. Second, Don Payang Moreta, the highly moral husband of Doña Lupeng. Third is Guedo, the young cousin to the Moretas who studied in Europe. And the Tatarin, a small old woman with white hair. Fifth, Entoy, the family driver. And sixth, the family cook and Entoy's wife, Amada. Point some important happenings in the plot, starting with exposition. The story was introduced by Doña Lupe awoke feeling faint with the heat. It was when she saw her three boys already attired in their holiday suits. Now for the rising action, Don Paeng felt that all those women had personally insulted him, which then he tried to get his wife. And now for the climax, it was when Don Paeng was horrified and the Tatarian was about to die. The old woman closed her eyes and bowed her head and sank slowly to her knees. Followed by the falling action, when the moon rose and flooded with hot billions the moveless, crowded square, it was when the procession or the ritual has begun. And the dinoma started when Doña Lepeng cried, Then come, crawl on the floor and kiss my feet, leading to the end of the story. Now for the theme of the story, the central message is stereotypical notions of masculinity and femininity, the difference between two gender and hierarchy that bind the two sexes. 
Written in the third-person point of view, the writer used literary techniques including narrative, imagery, and symbolism. He also used some of the Beit Tagalog words. As you may have observed, there was the word hoy. And this way of writing, or Joaquin's way of writing, depicts the Filipino way of living during the 1850s set in the Spanish era, which explored a patriarchal structure. I will share the moral lesson that I picked up from the story. We should treat each other with respect, both men and women equally. In order to do that, we must exert mutual effort in showing respect to our fellow human beings.